let's see who we're going to hear from first. So what we'll do, we'll begin with our opening statements, and uh, Mr. Sams, uh, you'll be first. Good morning, Chairman Manchin, Ranking Member Barrasso, and committee members. And thank you, Senator Wyden, for those kind introductions. I'm joined today by my wife, Lori Sams, and my oldest daughter, Rosavelli Sams. Our son, Chauncey, and daughters, Clara and Ruby, are home in Oregon. I'm honored and deeply appreciative to be the President Biden's nominee to be the 19th Director of the National Park Service. And I'm grateful for the invitation to appear before this distinguished committee. I'm an enrolled tribal member of the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation. I am Cayuse and Walla Walla with blood ties to the Yankton Sioux and Kokopah peoples. On my American Indian side of the family, we have lived here since time immemorial, or for at least 15,000 years. I'm also Dutch and French descent. Two of my great-grandfathers came west to Oregon in the 1800s. Hendrik Sams immigrated to the American colonies in the mid-1700s, and his descendants came west on the Oregon Trail in the 1850s. My great-grandfather, Joseph Larocque, came to Oregon Territory in 1812 and worked for the Pacific Fur Company. My great-grandmother, Mary, was a Walla Walla and Cayuse tribal member and the daughter of Chief Pio Pio Mox Mox, head man of the Walla Walla people. My personal history is deeply interwoven with the fabric of our shared American history. After serving in the United States Navy as an intelligence specialist, I worked in natural resources and conservation management across the nation in urban and rural areas for nearly 30 years now. I have served in local, regional, national organizations that have conserved fish and wildlife and our common spaces of land. My record is one of engagement and collaboration some of my closest friends and colleagues in Oregon are non-Indian farmers and ranchers. Most recently, I served as the Umatilla Tribe's Executive Director and Deputy Executive Director, managing over 190,000 acres of land and resources with over $700 million in assets, while also co-managing with local, state, and federal agencies over 6 million acres of land that were granted to the United States under the Treaty of 1855. I currently serve as a council member of the Pacific Northwest Power and Conservation Council with a jurisdictional area covering Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana, working to ensure that we can meet the power needs of our people and economy and to protect fish and wildlife. The National Park Service is a very special agency with a timeless mission to preserve resources and to ensure, inspire current and future generations. I'm excited to lead that mission. Although I have not worn the National Park Service uniform, I have worn the uniform of the United States Navy during wartime, and I wear the regalia of my tribe to honor my ancestors and elders. These uniforms are reminders of the sacrifices made to protect our homelands and the responsibility to pass down those lands in a stronger state than they are now. I have a tremendous respect for the people and places of the National Park Service. While hiking recently on John Day Fossil Beds National Monument with my family, I was struck by the professionalism and the expertise of the rangers and realized that I've visited over 100 national park areas and monuments over the past 50 years. This time with our national treasures taught me the importance of being an American and being part of something bigger in life. The National Park Service cannot achieve its mission without a well-supported workforce, and I'm committed to focusing on the caretaking of this mission. Staffing, housing, and other issues are impacting morale and deserve active attention. I'm also very aware of the concerns about the harassment of National Park Service employees, particularly women, and I have always had a zero tolerance approach in harassment and will bring this, this to the position if confirmed. As for the sites themselves, our treasured national parks is not just lakes and mountains. The agency safeguards some of the country's most solemn and hallowed places, the bed where Abraham Lincoln died, the steps of the Lincoln Memorial upon which Martin Luther King Jr. professed his vision for a better America the graves of our service members, and our presidents. Despite the clarity of the National Park Service mission, there are differences in opinion about how to accomplish it. In Indian country, we expect an open discussion with the federal government prior to making decisions, not after the fact. If confirmed, I'll bring this spirit of consultation to the service as director. I look forward to consulting with neighboring communities, stakeholders, local, state, and tribal governments, and members of Congress, even when the conversations and topics are challenging. I can assure you I take this responsibility seriously. I hope to earn your support to be the 19th Director of the National Park Service. I've appreciated speaking with many of you and learning from your insights. If confirmed, 
I'm committed to provide for the protection, stewardship, and public use and enjoyment of our national parks. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Sams. And now we're going to have Mr. Crabtree. <laughs> 